So ESP project number three, let's discuss. Uh, share the screen with you guys. So in project number three, what we are doing, we are going to use the FFT um, that you learned in chapter number four, and you are going to generate um, time domain signals, and then you are going to calculate the spectrum of those time domain signals using FFT, and then observe different frequencies that are involved in that spectrum. So you are going to generate multiple signals, and then observe their spectrum. The first signal that you're going to generate is white noise uh, with Gaussian distribution. And to generate white noise in MATLAB, you have to use the random function, R-A-N-D-N. That is the function to generate the white noise. And it is right over here. So you're generating the white noise with zero mean and the standard deviation of five. Just check the help of random function, RADN, help RADN, and it will show you how to generate the Gaussian uh, noise or white noise uh, with a specific mean value and a specific uh, standard deviation. Um, I believe the standard RADN has zero mean but the standard deviation of one, but you can also change the standard deviation. Again, check the help of random function and it will show you what you have to do to change the standard deviation and the mean um, for the data that you're going to generate. You have to generate 4,096 points uh, using the random function, RADN, and those 4,096 points will be considered as the white noise points. And then uh, when you do the distribution of those that you don't have to do, um, but that distribution will have zero mean and it will have a standard deviation of five. So um, once you generate the time domain signal, then you're gonna go ahead and you are going to apply the FFT function in MATLAB and observe the spectrum of that signal. And we are assuming that, that the data that you generated, um, that is uh, sampled at eight kilohertz or 8,000 hertz. And that will give you the information about the sampling time so that when you plot the data, then you have the correct sampling time. And when you plot the spectrum, then you have the correct sampling frequency for one cycle. Um, so plot the sample data, Xn versus N, um, using the stem plot. So Xn, of course, is your uh, 4,096 points. However, 4,096 points are just too many to plot. So I'm asking you just to plot only the 100 points, the first 100 points from 0 to 99 versus n, and that's what you're doing. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you have to plot the, the spectrum of the signal, the amplitude spectrum of the signal, because remember, x is a complex quantity, so you will calculate the amplitude spectrum of the signal, and you're going to plot against the frequency f. And as I mentioned over here, make sure to convert the x-axis for the spectrum from discrete k values, that is the sample values, to continuous F. So you, you calculate the sampling um, resolution first and then multiply by that sampling resolution by the value of K to change the X axis from the harmonic number K to the sampling free, uh, to the frequency F. Uh, and that is going to be your figure number one. And you are plotting these two, that is the time domain signal and the spectrum as subplot. So that's Figure one will have two subplots. Um, the top one is gonna be Xn versus N, uh, and you're only plotting the 100 points. And then the bottom one is gonna be Xf versus F, the magnitude of Xf versus F. Okay, um, print out the value of the frequency resolution, a delta F in the plot window. Uh, use text function as you did in the last uh, in the last experiment as well. Also, you're gonna include a sound function in your program and you're gonna play a sound corresponding to the scaled value of white noise. So the example is given over here. This is what you're going to use. Sine of X, which is your input data set divided by the maximum absolute value of X. 
and play the sound with the sampling rate of sampling frequency of fs which is 8 kilohertz so that's going to play a sound hissing sound because your uh, white noise has kind of hissing sound the second signal that you're going to generate is a compound signal which is comprised of three sinusoidal frequencies uh, 500 hertz 1200 hertz and 1800 hertz so you're going to first generate uh, the data point corresponding to each frequency is assume the sampling time for each signal to be eight kilohertz. And you are going to, um, cal uh, you are going to uh, calculate the data points up to one second for each of the signal. So remember eight kilohertz is a sampling frequency, calculate the sampling time, and then you're gonna calculate, uh, you're gonna calculate the points uh, sampled with the sampling time up to one second. So you will have, I don't know how many points you're gonna have uh, but and a good number of points. You're going to create a, a signal, which is the sum of all these. So you're going to add all of them together. Uh, so the resultant signal will also uh, have uh, the data points up to one second. And then what do we have? You have to calculate the frequency spectrum of XM. So a spectrum of the sum of all three signals. Again, plot two figures uh, with four subplots. The first uh, three subplots are going to be X1, X2, X3, and the fourth subplot is going to be X. So you're gonna plot in the time domain versus sampling number X1, X2, X3, and sum of all these, so X. Uh, that's going to be your figure number two. And your figure number three will um, have two subplots, which will be the amplitude spectrum X of K uh, versus K and uh, the, the X of K versus K and X of F versus the frequency. So discrete scale K converted into continuous scale of F. And I'm asking you to plot only the first 30 samples of the time signal X1, X2, X3, and X for a better visualization. So the time domain signals, again, I don't know how many points are going to be there once you sample them up to one second but you only have to plot the first 30 points. <clears throat> Properly print out the, in the plot window um, through your program, use text frequency resolution, frequency components that you observe in the spectrum. So frequency resolution and frequency components that you observe in the spectrum and make sure that, uh, you know, you already know what frequency components you are expecting uh, since you know the frequency of each signal. Include sound function in your program to play a sound corresponding to the scaled values of X1, X2, X3. Use pause at the end of each sound to create a pause between the successive signal sounds. So um, given uh, the example is given here. The third signal is a um, voice signal. And you click on this and you download the speech file. And then you're gonna read the speech file using audio read command in MATLAB or Octave. Um, this is the syntax, x is equal to audio read speech dot wave as a wave file. So your x will have all the data corresponding to the speech file. Obtain the frequency spectrum of the data x. So again, use FFT. Again, assume that the sampling rate is eight kilohertz because I sampled this file at eight kilohertz anyways. And the calculate the amplitude spectrum from the frequency spectrum. Um, calculate two subplots, one with the given samples versus time, with the amplitude of the frequency spectrum of samples versus frequency in hertz. So you have two subplots. The first subplot is going to be your time domain signal, and the second subplot is going to be the amplitude spectrum of the signal that you obtained using F50 versus the frequency. And from the plots, observe the maximum frequency, that is bandwidth of the signal, which is the highest frequency with substantial magnitude. Plot the following in the, uh, print the following in the plot window, frequency resolution again, and important frequency components in the signal that you observe from your uh, FFT plot or amplitude spectrum. Again, include a sound function in your program to play a sound for the speech file that you have. So it's rather straightforward. Uh, once you create one, then pretty much it's the same for the second uh, signal and the third signal. So once you create 
the signal number one and then do the spectrum and all those things, the same thing you're gonna follow for each one of them. Let me go ahead and show you this, the how, uh, you know, what you're expecting. So let me run my program. Okay, let's see. It's Experiment three, I believe. True. So these are all the signals. The first signal that you heard, the hissing sound that you heard, uh, was the white noise, which is this. So this is the white noise in time domain, and this is the frequency spectrum, amplitude spectrum of the white noise. Uh, the second uh, tone signals that you heard are different tones, and the, finally the compound tone. So this is your 500 hertz frequency, uh, your uh, 1200 hertz frequency, and then 1800 hertz frequency. And this is a compound signal. And these are the frequency spectra. This is versus K. Uh, and then this is versus F frequency. So as you can see, you have three impulses and each of the impulse correspond to one of the frequencies. And then finally, this is a speech signal, uh, your original speech signal uh, that I provided you. And this is the, uh, this is your uh, spectrum of the speech signal, amplitude spectrum. As you can see, 4,000 Hertz is the folding frequency. So basically you can observe all the frequencies from zero to 4,000 Hertz. Uh, so this, this is a project uh, and make sure you also put the text. Uh, I'm just putting the text over here, but uh, later I changed it. And then I asked you to put the text in the command window. So I, you know, you don't have to go back or I don't have to go back to the command window to see what you're putting. I want, I want you to put the text that I'm asking you to put in the plot window, not the command window, sorry, in the plot window like you did in the last uh, project. So this is a project, this is what you're doing. And I hope this video is going to help you. And if you have any questions, then of course you can always contact me.